we're going to stay for now in the mode of negotiating the indemnification provision in the acquisition of a privately held company. And we're going to take a look at a limitation on the seller's indemnification obligations, the consequential damages exclusion. This is yet another example of a fight between buyers and sellers that now swings the buyer's way, in part because of our newly developed buyer power ratio deal point statistics. I continue to play the role of the seller's counsel, and Keith will continue to play the role of the buyer's counsel here. And Keith, I've reviewed your draft acquisition agreement, and as you can see, I am proposing a minor change to your indemnification provision. I'm excluding consequential damages from the types of damages that your client can recover under the indemnification provision. There are two types of damages that arise from a breach of contract. Direct damages, also sometimes referred to as general damages, and consequential damages. I'm conceding that your client gets to recover the direct damages. Just stay away from the consequentials. I'm not sure you can even tell me what consequential damages are. As proof of that, I'm just going to cite two cases. One very recent case decided by the highest court in New York, and it was a split decision, four to three. Seven judges could come to agreement as to whether lost profits constituted general damages or consequential damages. Read what the wise then Vice Chancellor Strine said in 2011. He says, this laundry list of precluded damages might have been put in the merger agreement by lawyers who themselves were unclear on what those terms actually mean. This is not surprising in light of the amorphous state of the law and its confusing efforts to clearly delineate the difference between general damages, i.e. direct damages, on the one hand, and consequential or special damages on the other. My client doesn't want to be liable for consequential damages that nobody understands what it is. It, it, it's, it's opening up my client to potentially expansive liability beyond what anyone ever could have contemplated. And likewise, if we exclude it, it's opening my client to a situation where we can exclude categories of damages that we should get. Let me give you the hypo as to why I need these things. Your client has given my client a representation that the target has all of the governmental permits it needs to run its business. Pretty simple rep. You're fine with that. Well, it turns out, if it turns out that your client is missing a permit, and let's just agree that it costs $5,000 to get that permit, turns out your client doesn't have the permit, it costs $5,000 to get... You can sue us for get, that $5,000. I know, you're, that's so nice of you. But, <laughs> but, if the factory is shut down for six months because the permit is not there, and my client suffers damages, lost profits as a result of that shutdown, you're damn right we're going to sue you for 5000 But we're also going to sue you for the $15 million that my client lost because the factory was shut down. Uh, you know, look, Keith, I've been practicing for a long time. You've been practicing for a long time. Much long longer for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but I've seen countless agreements over my career. They all have carve-outs for consequential damages. Carve-outs of consequential damages are absolutely standard. But Rick, you're looking at the wrong set of contracts. In this deal where my client has a $100 billion market cap, and it's paying $200 million, and it has a 500 to 1 buyer power ratio, my client wins 82% of the time. So if you look at the statistics where people are doing deals, we're winning this point all the time, and we're going to win it here. Yeah. So that's the motto. Keith wins. And, I, and uh, out of character, as you know. I, I love that motto. Keith wins and Rick loses. <laughs> <laughs> and this notion that, well, it's standard practice. It's not standard practice. So I think the lesson here, it's, it's for those of you on the buy side, is to be very wary of these requests for artificially limiting the court's ability to assess damages in a case like this.